Looking at the fixed income market, we know that the U.S. fixed income market has been struggling this year. Interest rates have gone up. When interest rates go up, bond prices go down. This is something we were expecting, and in fact, um, for that reason, we altered the portfolios last year to defend against rising interest rates. Something else is happening, though, in the fixed income markets. The yield curve is flattening. So what the yield curve basically is, is if we take a short-term interest rate and, and plot that and a long-term interest rate, the yield curve along that way from a two-year to a five-year to a 10-year to a 30 should create a curve. And in normal, healthy markets, it's an upsloping curve from the two-year to the 30. In other words, a two-year is 1%, a 10-year is 3%, a 30 is 4 When that curve starts to flatten, that means that the market believes that the long-term prospects of the economy may not be as, as attractive as the short-term prospects. And when the curve inverts in that the short-term number is actually higher than the long-term, that signals trouble in the marketplace. So what we know is a flattening yield curve or a curve that is getting flatter is actually a warning sign and something we want to take note of. So as we look at this first chart, we see that the yield curve, the higher the chart, the higher the number in the chart, the more of a, a steep curve we have in the yield curve. And as we see over the last couple of years, that yield curve has been flattening somewhat consistently. Now, the reason that's happening is because the Federal Reserve is raising rates. So the short-term rates are coming up. They've actually been coming up very quickly. The long-term rates are moving much slower, therefore a flattening of the curve. And if we look, we're not quite back to the levels we were in 06 and in 2000, but I would note that in 06, that was the beginning of the breakdown of the housing market and then eventually our bear market. In 2000, that was the beginning of the breakdown of tech stocks and then, of course, the bubble uh, bursting on the market as well. So we have, we have a, a long bull market. We have a flattening yield curve. Again, we're not at those levels but it is something we want to watch. Now, it's important to note, an inverted yield curve happens every time we have a recession. When you have a recession, you get an inverted yield curve. But it's also important to note, not every time you get an inverted yield curve do you get a recession. So it's not necessarily a perfect predictor, but it is something that we don't want to see and something we definitely want to watch and we want to be careful of. What is unusual in the fixed income markets globally, though, is as we look at the U.S. versus the rest of the world, um, the U.S. yields are, are remarkably attractive. Now, this is not normal. If we think about risk versus return, the lower the risk, the lower the return. Higher risk, higher returns. And so the U.S. is, in fact, the lowest risk treasury issuance in the world. It's the higher credit rating. And as we can see on this chart, it's the highest yield. So we're getting the most return for the lowest risk. The market is without question out of balance. Now, why is that the case? Well, is it because the U.S. is unwinding this massive uh, amount of, of funds that were pushed into the market by the Federal Reserve during the crisis? Yes, that definitely has something to do with it. That's also affecting the yield curve. Um, is it because there's an, uh, an overwhelming appetite for risk? Well, we see that in the fixed income markets. Italy, which has gone through numerous financial crises, now has a lower yield than the U.S. Treasury. Again, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Germany, the U.K., France, all lower. Um, so it's something we take note of. That tells us we don't want to run off to the developed markets to invest money. Um, we want to be very careful there. And speaking of risk, um, again, as we look at yield spreads between treasuries and investment grade and investment grade and high yields, what the market's telling us right now is no one's worried about a recession and no one's worried about defaults. Traditionally, when the yield spread gets high, in other words, the yield on an investment grade is, say, 4 and a high yield is 8, that's a 4% spread. So when those spreads are wide, the market's saying, I'm worried. I need more return to take the risk of a high yield or a junk bond. When those, when those spreads get very tight, that means the market's not worried about default. They'll accept smaller returns to take on risk. Well, where we are today is below the norm. These spreads are very, very tight. So what that tells us 
is you're just not getting paid to take risks today. Um, even though we're positive on the economy, we're just not getting paid for taking risk. And so we're going to remain very defensive in our fixed income portfolios. Stay away from risk, high quality, stay short across the board, floating rates so that if rates go up, our bonds don't go down. This is not a market that we want to take chances in when it comes to the fixed income markets.